All right, what I wanted to go over today is how to uh, model more organic kind of shapes using Max's T-splines, which is basically subdivision surfaces. And so I'm just going to take you through a process that maybe can help you, some of the people that have more flowing and organic types of shapes that you need to make. All right, we're going to start out with uh, creating a sketch. And we're going to create it from uh, the side. And what we're going to be doing is just creating some rails. Okay, so this is just a uh, organic kind of shape that we're going to make. Something kind of like this. And then let's do another one. So maybe kind of a swooping kind of shape. Maybe something kind of like that. That seems okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll close those up. Okay, so we finished that sketch. All right, so now we're going to um, give this some depth. So this, these are going to be rails on a loft that I'm going to do. Okay, I'm drawing these lines across because I need to be able to draw uh, from another uh, plane, but I need it to be perpendicular to this one. So what I can do here is add a construction plane by angle. So when I click on this, it's going to put a construction plane on it. And now I can tell it to go 90 degrees. And now it'll put a 90 degree angle on that. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing down here. And run that one at 90 degrees. And this is going to give me two planes that I can draw to give this piece some depth. All right, so we're going to draw a new sketch on this plane. And I'm going to switch it back to 3D view. And I can turn back that plane on. And if I want to, I can drag it out further. You can just grab the edges of these. It's an infinite plane, but just kind of get a little bit bigger so it's out of my way. Okay, so um, I'm going to edit this sketch. And then I'm going to draw, and I need to snap to that point. I'm going to draw out to, and then snap back to it. And I'm just creating it kind of boxy right now, which is fine. Later, uh, we can alter that shape, but that gets us a shape down here, and then we can have another shape down at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to create another Finish that sketch. We'll create another sketch on this plane. And let's say we maybe want it a little bit thicker. Okay. And then if we want, let's make this a little bit thinner up here. So let's go ahead and edit that. And we'll just make that one go in. So it's a little bit more narrow at the top. So it's going to be a little um, fatter at the bottom and narrow at the top. Okay, so there's what we're going to start with. So now we're going to switch over to our T-splines. And what we're going to do is a loft. And then we're going to go down here and we can pick the uh, top piece. And we really want to stop that. Let's turn on this chain selection, which will select that whole arc. And then we'll select this one down here, the whole arc. And you'll see that's going to create me a subdivision going up from one to the other. But what we want to do is we want to create uh, some rail guide rails. And so we can pick this as a guide rail and then pick this as a guide rail. And I'm getting an error. So why am I getting an error? Okay, let's try this again. Think, oh, I, I think I know what it is. So, loft. Let's get rails, this one, and, and then another rail. Okay. And now let's get our, 
It was pick all three of these. I think when I put chain, I think it picked that one back there too, which we don't want. And then we'll pick this. There it goes. All right. Now, this is way too many subdivisions. It, it defaults to eight, which is way too many, or at least it's too many for me. Uh, I'm going to go three here, which will divide it this way. And then maybe, oh, what about three? Let's say, let's go four this way. And now we've got a nice swooping kind of shape. Okay, we can complete that. Now what I want to do is I want this to go down into a circular shape down here. So I'm going to draw a new sketch. And I'm going to make it a circle. And I'm going to have it so it's a little bit bigger than this. So we're going to have this flow out into this circle. And uh, let's go ahead and move it. Maybe down a little bit. Maybe something about like that. Okay. And we can finish that sketch. Okay, so now what we can do is an extrude, and we can pick this, and we can extrude this out. Okay, and this is a subdivision two. And let's see, I want more than eight. What do I want, like 12? Let's see how many subdivisions, 16 is too many. Well, seems like it would be okay. So we'll do 12. All right. And then I need to have... Let's go three. This way. And that looks pretty good. Now, one of the things about um, T-splines... Subdivision services in Fusion, it's a little bit different than in, say, Max. In Max, you're creating two different objects, and then we have to attach them together. It, here, these are one object. It builds it as one object. All right, so uh, I'm going to pick these, and I'm going to do Alt-1, and that'll put them into a box mode. And I'm going to turn off this grid for right now. Now, I don't want... Uh, these, so that was necessary to get my, my three I wanted here, but I can just double click and then delete those. I don't need any of these edges and I want to get finished with, run them up here too. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to hide this body and then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to weld these. I'm going to weld this together to be one object because you'll see right now it's making it as separate pieces, which is fine. But now I'm going to weld them together. So what we want to do is to go to weld vertices and I can drag a box, drag a box, drag a box. And that's welding those. By dragging a box, it's just uh, welding them both at their, their centers. And... There. You can always tell with that double dark, that double dark line that these, well, it's either there need to be welded or it could be a, a hard edge. Okay, so now those are all together. And so if I do Alt-3, that'll be rounded. You can see it's a rounded kind of shape. Nice and smooth kind of a shape. All right, let's unhide this other one. I'm going to go back to a box mode. And what I want to do is take, I'm going to go right click and go edit form. Now this edit form is letting me get into the sub object to edit on this. I'm going to go to edge and I'm going to double click on this edge. And then I'm just going to slide this out because I want to stitch this in here. So that's okay. And now another thing that's going to happen here is, um, 
I'm going to slide this over a little bit. So let's go ahead and edit form. And then I'm going to change to uh, this button here. This makes it that's going to go parallel to that surface. And I'm just going to slide that over a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same with this one over just a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to come in here and put a line right down the center of those. Okay, then I can start welding some things. All right, so I want to get rid of this, this, and this. Let's see, and I need to get rid of this one too. Okay, so then we can uh, go in and we can weld vertices. So I'm going to weld this one to that one. And this one to there. And then we'll go over here. We're going to weld that one to there. And this one to there. And then we're going to do the same here. This up to there. To there. And to there. Okay, now we stitch that all together. I can click OK. And now we can do our Alt uh, 3 for smooth. And you see we've created this nice smooth shape going from this to that. Okay. Now, um, I did notice sometimes that I get a warble in this. And it's how, it's kind of funny. I, I kind of want to talk to the fusion people and kind of find out. Because when I'm doing the subdivision, it's sliding these edges around. It doesn't do that in Max, but it's sliding the edges around. So what that means is, is that when I turn my sketch on, some of these don't match up. So what I have to do is come back to Vertex, and I'm going to tell it to move uh, based on my screen. And now I just want to grab these and kind of realign those back on just to make sure we're getting a nice it's keeping a pretty nice curvature to it and I don't get a lot of kind of warbles in it because this all looks pretty good that one's a little off right there so I do find I have to go in and just clean it a little bit that looks good all right, now I want to get this end on this. So what I can do is uh, I can go to my um, edit form and I'm going to go to edges. I'm going to double click on this and I want on this uh, coordinate space, the first one. Now what I can do is I can grab this corner right here and if I hold this, uh, the alt key down, it'll clone it and it will put me some more geometry coming in like so. But what I really want to do is um, I want it to have a hard edge to it. Okay, so a trick is you're, you're holding Alt is what you're holding down. This is scale. This corner right here is scale to, to clone the edge. If I hold down Alt and Control, it'll clone the edge and it will put a crease on it. So I can go something like that. And then I'm going to move it backwards so it's Control and Alt at the same time. And then those put puts a crease so it holds that shape. Now, the advantage of that is that I can come in now and I can do an edge, insert an edge, and I double click on this, and I can insert uh, an edge in here. Okay, oops, wrong one. That's uh, this one's insert edge. Okay, and then I'm going to put an edge on one side. Now, the thing about it is, is you can put an edge on both sides, and that one's working pretty good. A lot of times I don't like it because the edge on one side is a little bit different than the other, and they don't, they just have to be close, but that looks pretty good right there. Click OK, and then I'm going to do the same thing again here. And. That looks pretty good, too. Sometimes if the tension is different, I'll put one on one side and then do it again and put one on the other side. 
All right, so you'll see if I go Alt-1 again that that's putting locking. Basically, I'm putting locking loops in there. I can always come back and slide them if I need to. Get them more in place. That all works good. And now what's happened is this all has still has a crease on it. It's got a creased edge. So even though here, it's still going to have that hard edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and this is uncrease. So if I double click on this, it'll uncrease that edge. And then let's do it again. Double click here and it'll uncrease that. You'll see we don't have those hard ed uh, dark double line anymore. So that's uh, taking that hard edge off of there. But I've still been able to maintain that shape. And then, of course, the other thing I can do is we can do a symmetry. So we can come in here, symmetry, mirror, duplicate. I can pick this, and then it's going to want the mirror plane. And because of the way I created this, uh, it's this plane here. Now, there is a weld threshold on here. So sometimes uh, you may have where you've moved some of this a little bit. And so, as a matter of fact, let's, let me just do that. I'm going to come in here edit form uh, vertex and let's just move this one just a little bit off okay so now I come in here and duplicate here and my plane is there and you'll see right there that it's that's not welding properly okay I have a threshold here so I can just increase this threshold and then it will reach out and weld that together now, this is an instance weld, which means that whatever I do to one side, it will do to the other. So if I decide that, you know, for some reason I want to come in here, uh, who knows, we'll just go in here and we'll go to polygons and we're going to take uh, these two polygons and I'm going to hold down my alt key and it's going to clone that out. You can see that it's doing it on both sides. So whatever I manipulate on one side, it will do that on the other. I could just maybe flare it. Like so. All right, so that's a really quick way to create kind of an organic shape. I can always come back in here and um, alter this more. A lot of times I want to be at a, maybe I want to do is to come in here and, oh, let's say take these two and I want them to come out a little bit more. And maybe to go up a little bit so it's a different kind of slope as this comes up. And then maybe what I want to do is I want to keep this curvature, but I want to change where this is at. So I can come in here and double click here. And I can insert... Let's just do one single. I'm going to put it, say, right about there. And then I think I'm going to do that again. We'll click. And I'm going to move it down, maybe right there. And then I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to delete that to take that one out of there. And I like that transition a little bit better. And let's go Alt-3. And then that gave me a little bit more of a slope in there than just straight coming in a little bit more of a slope. So at a certain point, you're going to finish the form. And that's where it's going to turn it into just a surface. Okay, now it'll still have to be a solid at some point. But for right now, this is okay. And then I can always come back and go back to the form 
and go back and edit it again, and then it takes me back into here. And now I'm back at subdivision surfaces and can cut and slice and do whatever it is I want to do. Okay, so I can go ahead and clear the symmetry. And now it's no longer going to be symmetrical. So in other words, now if I wanted to, I could come back in here and I could be manipulating one side and it's not manipulating the other side. Okay, so that is, I'm going to undo that. That is where you're finished. And we need, now we want to do one side different. We'll clear the symmetry and then it doesn't have the symmetry on there anymore. So hopefully that uh, can help you in creating some of these uh, more organic forms that you might be getting into uh, with this next assignment that we're doing. Okay, hopefully that helps you. Thank you very much.